Hello, welcome to day 86. Today I'm just going to show you a quick rundown of how I edit videos on my phone. I try to do screen, screen recordings. Um, there's the native app and then another app that I've installed. But they keep crashing when I try to record screen recordings of me editing. Um, this phone, I guess 4K is just... Editing 4K is too tough for it or something, but the editor also crashes quite often. Um, but if I try to use the editor and the screen recorder, it <laughs> it just dies too often. So I hope you don't mind the little bits where I just kind of hold the phone in front of the camera. It doesn't look the best, but hopefully it was in focus. If not, I guess I'll cut all that out. But the gist of it is uh, what I want to show you. So hopefully the screen recording will show you just kind of an idea of what I go through, how many clips are involved, what I do to clean it up. And later on, I'll show you like screenshots of like the final edits of like all the little text and the music and the overlays and stuff like that I have over everything. And it kind of shows you like the kind of work I put into editing on my phone. But uh, it's going to be a shorty. And this video, I'm just running an experiment. I'm not going to monetize this video at all. So I'm curious if you saw an ad, just kind of comment below because I know... YouTube said they'll monetize some videos whether you do it or not. I'm just curious. So here's a typical video project. I already added all the videos in. I always try to get something engaging in the beginning, but I toss it in so I have to edit it down to something short. Then my intro and then the star of the day video. Altogether right now it comes to about 35 minutes unfortunately, but I'm gonna have to cut it all down. I'll probably get down to about 25. That kind of tells you how much extra waste there is. And my video editor does crash quite often, so I have to keep going into it. And uh, recording the screen as well makes it crash even more. Um, didn't record my last segment. But generally, I will watch every second of every video to just to make sure I don't like stop to clear my throat. Or right here, I actually switched hands and I had to cut into that. And uh, also at the end, right now it's in my right hand and I switched to the left hand again. So I have to cut through that. And also at the very end, like over right here, like I switched. I don't like to pan really quickly. So I'll cut it right here. So I'll do this right here. But check out the view from um, my bed here. Check out the view, so I'll cut it. And then while the camera pans, yep. once it's steady, that's good. So 50, 55.1. Yep. Yep, 55.1 is where it's good cut. So we'll delete that. So the... My bed here. Yep. It's all iced over and all the trees are iced over. Everything's iced over. I was trying to do a screen recording of how I edit videos, but it only let me do it for a few seconds at a time. I might have to restart this thing to um, get it working well again. It just either the editing app crashes or the recording app crashes just over and over. That's what you get when you work with 4K video on a, a little phone like this. But hope you get the gist of what I do. Um, there are several clips and I go through. Um, I haven't shown you the color correction all. I'll actually record it and show it to you here. Sorry folks, but my video recording app keeps crashing because the resolution of the files I'm using and the video editor also uses a lot of resources so that crashes sometimes as well. So this is basically my streams flow. And if I zoom out in the timeline you can actually see how many clips there are all together. <laughs> and I have to go through generally cut out the first second and all ending seconds of most of them just because I, I'll turn on the camera and wait to record things like that and some of them I will have to adjust the colors as well um, some of the ice video I think they look a little dark so I'll probably adjust brightness contrast like some of these look good and I still haven't added the photos yet so I go to the end and I'll add photos and then we're on day 82 and I'll go through and edit whatever photos I might need. Here's the elevation profile for the day. I can look at them. 
and uh, most of it's uh, of ice, a <laughs> lot of ice, and I have to figure out which ones are good. Yeah, this one actually came out nicely. You could see all the refraction from the colors of the ice. I was hoping they'd come out okay. As you can see, I take a lot of pictures, but out of all these, I'll show one or two because there's no point showing just a ton of them. Um, nobody wants to see the same things over and over. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of these and uh, I'll pick one or two out of these. I try to frame the landscape shots within frozen branches and it looks like it turned out okay. I'll have to look at it some more. And there are tons of nice cloud photos, several of those, lots of flower photos. And I just have to figure out which ones to keep and which ones not. I only took one picture of that water cascade. It turned out nicely though. That'll go at the end. And uh, that's it. Right now it's at 37 minutes. And I will have to cut a lot of the video. Let's see. Front of me here. I think I recorded a lot just because there's all this ice. And there, are, I think there's a 30 second time lapse in here as well, so I got to get rid of that. I think a lot of times I was just standing around waiting for ice to fall near me, but it uh, didn't really happen. But that's the gist of my editing during the, during the day. So at the end I have all these pictures and I have them panning the way I want them. Then I have a video at the end and I never found a good way to just kind of fade out. So what I do is I put a color board at the end and I use opacity keyframes. So at 0% here and it goes to 100% and that's the best way I found the fade out. So if you're looking for a fade, give that a shot. Another thing I do often is when I'm recording something and I want to make it like a nice cinematic move, I'll do it several times and I'll have to go in on my phone and pick out the best one. Of usually two or three unless the first shot I actually do it and it feels really good. And after I film those, I always look at it on the camera just to make sure if it's good enough. If it's not, I'll have to re-record. Um, so generally, I have to go through, pick out the best ones, don't use the old ones. So on a big timeline, there could be three clips of the same exact thing just done over and over. And there's a lot of that, so I'll have to go through that. And just a lot of uh, cut and clean. My goal when I'm editing is I don't want to waste your time. So I don't want to put in things that... I would want to see if I was watching like irrelevant stuff if it was too much I don't want to do too much walking down the trail unless something that looks really cool and it's something nice that I, I want you to see um, that it's worth your time to see but if it's kind of boring I'll cut it and just kind of fade into the next interesting spot um, just a lot of things like that I want to make it so when you might watch my videos you don't feel like you wasted a bunch of time so um, that's pretty high on my list. That's why I cut out a lot of this stuff in the beginning extra. Um, I don't like to talk that much as I climb. Not just because I'm huffing and puffing, but, but also because I found in other people's videos, they'll talk slower. They'll be like, talk like this, and it just takes too long. So I'd rather stop for a second, catch my breath, say what I need to say, and then keep going. So you don't need to hear me breathing every other word. So. Um, but everything is on my phone. Um, here are, let's see if I can show you. Oh, here's actually my projects. Video projects from all the weeks, days. There's when I was sick. Virginia Creeper Trail portion, Damascus. It's, uh, it goes way back. I do everything on my phone. Takes a lot of work and uh, sometimes you get to town and you have five days of footage and it just kind of feels overwhelming and that happened this time around. I got in, had a ton of footage and had a five nights stretch coming up and I knew I had so much and it just, when you, I don't know, I don't know about you but when I feel overwhelmed I just can't muster the spirit to get started and going and I don't know, it takes a little while, but I finally am into it. Got a few more to do, but I think I'll get it knocked out today. And I'll get back on trail and then 
it'll be five days of hiking away. And um, I'm going to try to do the Shenandoahs relatively quickly. So I'm not going to, I already decided, sorry folks, I'm not going to do like these 1.2 mile blue blazes up a mountain and back. That just adds so many more miles right now. And um, as you can see, like day, day 80 was mile 800 and that's 10 miles a day average. Although I had a week off, but that's not the best average. So still trying to improve that. And uh, I also need to rent a car for to get down to trail days. So I'm trying to get to a town that has car rental places. And so I'm trying to get there definitely by the day I need to get there. So things are tight now. So within two weeks, I have to go pick up a rental car and then head down, pick up Tina, and then go to trail days. We're going to get there a few days before trail days just so we could have time to ourselves. So hopefully we'll see all of you there. And uh, that's it for this zero, my double zero. Yesterday, um, I slept a bunch, laid around a bunch. I was so tired. But today, it's work, work, work. I still have to sort out my resupply food. It's all just sitting in grocery bags right now. And um, tomorrow we get back on trail. So thanks for watching. Hope this one uh, didn't bore too many people. It's a little different, but I just want to show you the kind of things I wind up doing on my phone all the time. So yeah, that's it. And uh, I'll talk to you later and have a good night. Thanks for watching.